Hi everyone, welcome to this short training video on social selling and service. From building your Facebook group, we're going to show you how to take it to the next level and I guess what I would say guys is this is where the magic happens within your online business. So a key part of that is building a community within your group. You would already have part of your startup process, been asking friends and adding your own Facebook friends to the group. And we're going to remind you here that this is a continuous thing that you should always do. So whether it be recommendation by adding friends yourself that we make connections with on Facebook on a daily basis, or perhaps it might be a recommendation from a friend who might add some of theirs. The key thing to your success here, guys, is that you continue to look for those new members, the new prospects, the new customers, and, but we want to give them reason to come to you. So this is where we build a community. So what is a community? A community is somewhere that people come willingly. Um, they come to interact. They come because you've made your group fun. Um, we're going to put it that you make your group fun through competitions, brain teasers, special offers, and many, many other things that we're going to cover today. A key part of that is that you serve to your customers, don't sell. You know, always be willing to go that extra mile to help them find the product or, you know, to interact with them, to make sure you show gratitude in any way that they've interacted with you, no matter how large or small that would be. Because one of the things that will drive people back to your community environment is feeling part of something. So that's where the serving rather than selling comes. Market your products to your customers. It is really important. You know, you are building an online business, so obviously selling is part of that. But we can do that through marketing as opposed to sort of badgering people to um, buy the minute they like or comment on something. So it's important that you market your products to your customers every day and present yourself well because not only do you only get one chance to make first impressions, when people come back to your community and your group every day, um, that impression sort of sits with them from before, but also how they see it as they log on that very day. So always make sure that you're aware of how much and take real pride in the effort that you put into marketing your products. We're going to touch today a little bit on Facebook reach. And good reach on Facebook is to keep your group really active. So rather than doing all your activity first thing in the morning, it's about spreading it and making sure that you've posted in there at least three times a day. And the key part of that is every day. One of the things I would urge you to do is give value first. So again, that's about going that extra mile. If you give value first, then the results will very simply follow. Um, you don't need to badger people to buy your products. You don't need people to be rolling their eyes saying, oh, it's, it's so-and-so back selling again. And um, we want to make it somewhere they want to come. And these are the tips that we're going to give you today. So one of the biggest things that you need to be doing is actually interacting with your group in itself. So interact with your group can be done in many, many ways. Um, and I've given you a few ideas just to give us some, some areas to cover today. So a picture does paint a thousand words. It also brings a little bit of fun and allows you to show a little bit of your personality in the group itself. So it can be regular posts on the group, you know, things like the one on the left, I love personally, you know, your husband called, he said, order anything you want. Um, again, my, my, my own group members have absolutely loved that. A reminder that orders are going in, it prompts people to place their order if they've been saying it must get back to that and they just happen to see the post, it will bring them to you. Again, without you having to constantly message to say, you said you might be interested, let them come to you. And of course, the gratitude. So thank you um, messages are really, really important for everything that they do, whether it be somebody liking on your group that you comment and say thanks for the like, please let me know if I can help you with anything, or just thank you for your order, you've made my day, I hope this delivery makes yours. Things like that, those little notes, those little posts are really, really important to your customers. When someone does give you a contribution to your group and they perhaps add some friends, you know, some of the posts that you're seeing here, images you're seeing are about encouraging people to remind them to invite their friends, remind them to keep adding their friends, you know, but what you need to remember is when they do it is make sure again, um, you, you sort of make a little bit of a fuss of them by putting a big thank you message on the group, tag them on it, so it's almost them seeing their name and lights, and what it does is it has quite a, an infectious um, effect, because what it does is somebody sees that and they think, oh, so-and-so needs help. Let me go and see if I can add some friends in there as well because they like the feel good of being thanked. So it's really important that you show that throughout your group. But again, it brings some fun to the group. You know, you can have customers coming back and you learn to know your customers a little bit 
about what works for them and, and what it makes them tick, what things they like and what things they don't. So make sure you interact with your group. If your group's sterile and it's just a list of products with the odd like on it, you really need to get to work on that and do take some advice if you find yourself in that situation. There's lots of ways that you can interact with your group because being social is really, really key to your success. You know, the magic happens in your Facebook group when you do the social stuff. Um, so interactive posts in your group are really key. And we would recommend that you should be doing two to three of these every week. A couple of samples here, but obviously there are um, lots of others that you can use. Um, if you visit the Vista Group or a Flame Picture Library, um, but also you can Google some of these images that there's lots of other ways to find them. Do take some guidance from your sponsor as well because they will keep you right. But again, some you'll put up in the group and they will get lots and lots and lots of comments and others you will put up and they will fall over with very little interaction. It does happen. Um, and I usually find personally the ones I absolutely love and think are fantastic are the ones that never have the greatest success. If you find you've got an interactive post in your group and there's not a huge amount happening, you need to chat to your sponsor or nudge a few friends and just actually ask somebody to come in and help you. You know, drop a message. You know the help support message that we use in the seven day fast start. Um, again, send that message to your closest friends. Look, you know, I'm looking to get my group going. Can you pop in and just comment on the little post that popped up? Or it might be that, you know, you message to your sponsor or you might have a buddy system with somebody else in the team where you reciprocate saying good morning and interacting and stuff. But do reach out. And um, many, many of you work within a team chat and you can reach into the team chat and say, I'm needing a little bit of help. We are all collectively here as one team. So it's really important you know that you have got that support and you know where to go for it. But interactive posts are, are again, a great way to keep the, the, the visibility in your group up. Um, if you've got people interacting, Facebook algorithms are really quite simple. They see things that people like because they're commenting. It doesn't matter what they're commenting, good, bad, or indifferent. If it's getting lots of comments, Facebook say, from a user perspective, this is something people like. Let's make sure as many people can see it as we can make possible. So that's a key part to it. So the interaction um, is, is a key part. So again, we talked earlier about serve, don't sell. You know, there are things you need to do. You need to get your customers involved in building this community group. Now, you can do little things like, you know, brain teasers, puzzles. Um, you can run a poll. You know, this um, make up word scramble to the left of your screen. Um, again, one of the things is, you know, the first 10 customers to comment that they've done it. Now, you might want them to just comment done under it. You might ask them to private message you with the answers. However you choose to do that, but you might want to say to them, the first 10 people that comment get 10% discount. They get a ticket and a free prize draw. They get into the, the once every three weeks, every sales campaign, you might be thinking, I'm going to do a giveaway and I'm going to utilize my free incentives that I get from the company. And then they might go into that draw once every three weeks and you might run them continuously throughout your, your sales campaign. But it's important to involve them ask them for opinion, you know, put up some of the interactive posts that says, you know, do you like an eye pencil or an, a liquid liner? Get to know your customers, things like what's your favorite colors, things like that, again, will help you target your marketing to individuals. So if you've got a good customer who, you know, absolutely loves purple, and we've got some stunning purple um, lipsticks in the collection, then you can post those products, tag them, say, oh, thought of you, you might like these, um, let me know what you think. Um, is this your thing? Whatever it may be, you know, obviously you have to say it in a language that reflects you. One of the biggest things I would say about being on Facebook is you have to be yourself. Um, now, if you're somebody who's a little bit shy, please don't think that means, you know, you can hide away because that's where you're comfortable. You need to do some of this social stuff, even if you are a little bit shy. But the great thing is, guys, that you're not face to face with people. So again, you're you're somewhere between your your comfort zone and, and being on the other side of that. So, you know, again, it's a stepping stone um, to get you doing stuff that perhaps you wouldn't normally do. But remember to serve the customers. You know, interact to learn more about them. Tag them and ask them for their comment and opinions. Create those polls, you know, what would you like to see? Do you want to see fragrances? Do you want to see skincare? Do you want to see makeup, accessories? You know, ask the questions and feed the audience what they want to see. 
offer a free local delivery service. I'm sure many of you already are, are, are lined up to do that, but you know, make sure that's clear that you'll do free local delivery and be willing to deliver that a little bit out of your local area. You know, so you may say my local area is a, I don't know, five mile radius. Be willing to go seven miles if somebody can't come and collect from you, even if they have to make a small contribution. Um, the key thing would be to be friendly and offer solutions, you know, because that's what people are going to remember. They're going to remember that they really wanted something and they couldn't get to you or they couldn't pay in the way that you wanted them to. So you've gone out your way to find a solution for them. And that's the community feel that they will make recommendations, but they'll also add the friends to the group. The friends will see comments under your, some of your product posts, thanks for your order, you know, so-and-so bought an order from me, they'll go, oh, I know them, they've bought, that's a good recommendation, even if it's not there. Um, the other thing, obviously, is to make sure that, you know, your customers do, it's kind of a two-way relationship, you need to give that value first, and then customers will give a little back, so if I give good service to a customer, I think it's quite reasonable to ask that customer to give me a review on some of my products. If I ask that customer to take part in a competition and they happen to be the winner, I, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask them to take a picture of the, the prize and, and post it back into the group. So it becomes a two-way relationship if you create a community environment. If it's constantly you just putting stuff out and there's nothing happening, chances are, guys, there is something in this process that you will have missed. So do go back and check that you've done everything. It is a jigsaw. It all fits together make sure you go back because the magic comes when you piece all this together. You're going to market your products. You know, always be looking at other ways to share your products with customers. You know, if a product customer comes to collect some products from you, make sure you put the latest catalogue or maybe it's a one-page flyer you've done on what the special offers are. You know, and a little compliment slip in the bag when you deliver so that, you know, the customer knows um, you're always at the forefront of their mind. They've got some information that they can hand on to somebody else because although they might not need your contact details or the name of your web shop, um, they may well pass that compliment slip on to somebody else as a recommendation. So that paper trail is really important. As well as that, it's nice to get it to say thank you and, and here's the latest. But again, it's given to them in a way that we want to serve them. We want to give them good service, but we're not badgering them to say, you know, do you need this? Do you need this? Because again, what we don't want to do is be, be pushy salespeople. But there's nothing wrong with asking somebody, what can I get you to help? You're going to PM your customers on a three-weekly basis with an offer. Um, you know, we have campaign offers. Um, when we do have the webinar at the end of every campaign, they launch the offers for the next campaign. Fantastic thing is you can immediately get them on a, a, a picture and um, you know whether it be a, a collage or whether it be a newsletter and get them in front of customers as early in that three week period as you can and do the follow-up but you want to build rapport because that will increase your sales so you know tailor things to suit the customers not suggesting every customer has an individual newsletter but listen to what your customers are asking for because it will definitely help you grow your sales and as I said, create a poll to see what it is they'd like to see. You know, what's their favourite um, product? You know, can you recommend? What's the favourite thing I've posted this week? You could do a collage of 10 products that you've posted this week so far. Ask them to tell you what their favourite is and why maybe. Again, getting a little bit of information from the customers um, about what works for them because that will allow you to service them. But it also makes them feel a little bit special and brings them back to your group time and time again. And obviously all of this activity is fantastic, um, but one of the things that we need to make sure you understand is the importance of your Facebook reach. So for a lot of people, it's the stuff that happens behind the scenes and it's not particularly important, but it is very, very important if you're running an online business. So what is it all about? Your Facebook reach is very simply the number of unique people who see your content. Everything on Facebook boils down to reach. Interactive groups and pages will always be seen more. So if you are consistent and you absolutely must be consistent with your online activities, your group will naturally be seen by more people within it anyway. So one of the things that people don't understand is they think that if you have a group of, um, let's say, 1,000 members and you post a product in there, if your Facebook reach is not as strong as it could be, you may find that naturally you're only popping up on 100 people's timelines, 10%. But 
But if you're very interactive and involve people and you get lots of people commenting on the stuff that you put on, that can make the difference between 100 or 800 people seeing every natural post that you do. Now, people not seeing it naturally doesn't mean it's, um, it's going to stop people coming to the group because actually what happens is people find your group, they pin it to their um, list of groups and they quite often come back and troll and um, scroll through it anyway. But what you want is as much natural activity as you can because that in itself will give you more Facebook reach. There's three things that Facebook look at. They look at, is it um, with the posts that you do, does it educate people? Does it entertain them or does it empower them? If you can make everything that you do apply to one of those three, you will find that your Facebook reach will naturally be much, much stronger. So educating them could be something about um, as we're health, wellness and cosmetics, could be something around you know, the importance of drinking water. It could be, um, did you know the difference between this product and that product? Entertaining them could be, you know, sharing a story or an example of something you've done that says comment below, or it could be you've shared a video. And these things apply to not only within your group, but also to your personal timeline. And a lot of people tend to get um, absorbed in their uh, Facebook group their comfort zone they know the people that are in there they're getting to know them and they forget they've got to venture out it and if you don't venture out onto your timeline and into buy and sell groups you will restrict some of the results that you get so it's also important that you make sure that when you are sharing stuff personally that you do make comments on things like videos you share and i'm going to touch on that in a second good reach as i mentioned earlier is posting three times a day on your timeline as well as in your group three is the magic number if you can do a bit more on your personal timeline, that's great. But I would say the average person does somewhere between three and 5.2, according to Facebook statistics. So three to five is a really good place to be. The key there is it has to happen every day. So I just want to give you something visual because some people like to see how it would impact them visually. And this is what happens with Facebook reach. So typically if I was looking at, and this was data captured building a Facebook group um, for someone within the team, and typically they got the group up and running, there was a little hype of activity at the beginning, they had about 20%, 15, 20% Facebook reach at that point. Because they were very, very consistent with the activity levels that we have recommended, you can see the blue bar being the amount of Facebook reach they have, and within 28 days, 70% of their members we're seeing their activity on a daily basis. Now that's massive, guys. It's rare for somebody to get above 80% um, without paying for advertising, but, but it is very much a great place to be if you reach 70%. But the consistency was really, really important. So we captured the data in two ways. We captured the data with a blip when we got towards the end of that 28-day period. So for a five-day period, we changed the activity levels. Day 22 was about 45%, exact same on the previous slide. And then what happened is we stopped doing the daily activity. Now, the key thing to know here, guys, is how quickly it drops. Um, we replied to messages and posted two products. Then on day 24, there was no posting at all, bumped a few. Day 25, posted some products, but no interactive stuff. And day 26, went back posting and put an interactive on that really had to be worked to bring people in and tag people and get them involved. But you can see it took, although there was only one day of no posting, um, well, two days if you look at 24, 25, there was only one or two days there that there was limited activity, but we lost nearly 40% of the Facebook reach because of those couple of days. Now, five days effectively sets you back nearly three times that in terms of Facebook reach. And your reach will absolutely be the only factor that drives your sales um, because that determines how many people are seeing what you're doing. So do not stop and start. The effects of being inconsistent really show when you're working online. So make sure that you stick to your daily activity, use the tracking sheets that are available and make sure you tick off the things that you do. Um, if you have a bad day, do you know what? Guys, don't beat yourself up about it. Try your best not to let that happen. Pre-plan, schedule things to happen if you're not around. Um, but make sure you get back on it straight away because one day would have been a blip. Four days is disastrous because it sets you back almost three weeks. So it's really important that you um, stay on that. 
So what can you do to see your Facebook reach? Many people watch videos like this and they'll say, how can I know what my Facebook reach is? You very simply can. It's a back office system with Facebook. But you can be active on your own profile. Remember the three things, educate, entertain, empower. So make sure you're busy on your own timeline. Post every day in your group. Don't miss it. There's no excuses, guys. There is activities. Um, there are tools on Facebook that enable you to schedule things in advance. So if you're planning to have two or three busy days because it's school holidays or whatever it may be, um, make sure you schedule your activity. Like, comment and share. You know, go into buy and sell groups and make sure you like and comment on things, even if you're not posting in there right at that time. It's important you build rapport and Facebook reach. So if people like on your group, make sure you comment on them um, and share things like videos or it might be a recipe or it might be, you know, something funny that somebody else has sent you and you probably post it onto your own timeline. But if you're sharing something that's already created content, a top tip for you is please make sure you add a comment to it. If you don't even as much as put, you know, a, an emoji or a love heart, or you know, a comment, whatever it may be, you will find it has no impact whatsoever on your Facebook reach. In fact, if you repeatedly share videos without commenting, you lose reach um, because you're considered as spamming. But it's really important that you do those things daily. You also want to post those two to three interactive things in your group every week. You might pop one up and it'll have less success than you'd hoped. Take it down leave it a day and then put another one up to build your interaction. And as I said earlier, reach out to your sponsor, your team, your friend, your family, and ask for the support to help get that moving. Um, I'm reiterating it again. I'm hoping you're sensing how important it is that good reach is posting three times a day, every day. One of the key things is you have to be friendly. You have to be yourself and use emojis. One of the greatest things for achieving Facebook reach is Facebook just loves an emoji. Now, let me tell you, laughing faces is the most overused emoji in the whole network. So try and use a few others, you know, and remember, um, it's not all about you, you know, do things that are, um, share things that are about other people, share things about, you know, success of other people you know. Um, love a good story, but make sure you're not always posting content that uses the words me, I, this, and um, making it all about you because it does actually affect your Facebook reach as well. But they do love a good emoji. So, guys, just to summarize today, build and sell well. So, if you build your group, you'll naturally sell well. Serve to stand out from the crowd. Be remembered because you gave great service. Do the competitions, the discounts, the brain teasers. You have to give value first. Give a little bit away first and then it will come back to you um, considerably more. Sell, share and be warm. Just be yourself. You know, don't pretend to be, well, actually to some degree for some people they, they would like to pretend to be somebody else because it's a confidence thing. But I think the thing is you, you, you should be posting on Facebook the way you would naturally communicate with people. You know, if you suddenly start writing in a very different manner, then you will find people will be questioning, you know, where you copied and pasted it from or who's telling you what to say. But day in, day out, consistency is absolutely key. And be social. That's the most important part, the, 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 the key ingredient to your success online. So, guys, thank you for watching. I hope that helps you. And go forward and be as social as you can be.